Hello, it's Duncan. We finished the previous Gilded Rose episode having introduced operators to our non-negative int value class and wondering whether we should double down on domain-specific tiny types by introducing a specific type just for our item quality. Let's find out, shall we? In the last episode, we introduced our second tiny type. We already had non-blank string, and we introduced non-negative int. And the point of introducing these types was to make illegal states unrepresentable, so that we couldn't create an item with the wrong things inside it, or even try to create an item with the wrong things. Because the parameter types would be these tiny types, which would have to have values in the right range inside them. At the end of that episode, we asked the question, whether non-negative int was going far enough, whether maybe we should have a type for quality. And so this episode, we're going to pull on that thread and see where it takes us. Let's just remind ourselves where we are. We have this item, and item has a quality that's a non-negative int. And non-negative int has a number of operations, minus, minus, and unary minus, no plus yet. And the reason it has no plus is because we expressed all of our changes in quality as a degradation, a degradation by an int on the current quality of our item. And part of my motivation here is this sort of ugliness and the fact that we can create items using the copy method, passing in inappropriate non-negative ints, and the fact that even when we're making things better quality, we're having to use this degraded by passing in a negative degradation, which feels a bit weird. Okay, reminding ourselves what we did with non-negative int, we use these value classes, and value classes are useful when we want to restrict an existing type. So I'm wondering whether we can say, if we copy non-negative int into something called quality, that quality is like a non-negative int, so it has a non-negative int inside it. And remember, these aren't actually inside normally Kotlin will arrange so we're just passing around the value and that means that even if we're passing around qualities actually we'll just be passing around an int. One thing we know about quality is it's a bit strange because it ratchets. So if you've already got a quality of 50 and you add to it then you keep 50 but if you've got a quality of 55 you can take one away from it and get 54. That is expressed at the moment in here this quality cap and this coercion and so on in item. Okay, back to quality then. We've got this require here. I'm not sure that's any use to us. Let's remove that. And let's leave the operators for now and see what happens. Okay, back to item. What we wanted was that our actual quality was this quality object. If we do that, then we'd need to wrap a non-negative int and a quality. And we'd need to go down to from our quality value value. This is the downside of inline classes. And here we're going to build a quality. Let's just see whether that passes. Ah, well, we've still got this private constructor in quality having copied it from non-negative int. But in fact, we don't need this odd constructor method because every non-negative int is a reasonable value of a quality. So I think we can take that out altogether and just call the constructor. Let's try that. Well, that's quite pleasing. I think this works largely because we have the same operations on quality as we had on our non-negative int, so that when we're doing maths, it all still works. And in other places, we've only really used the two string and the two string on quality maps to the two string on the value inside it and the two string on the value inside it is our non-negative int, which just does two string on an int. So that's why we haven't changed the behavior really at this point. What I propose to do now is say, we'd like to get rid of this degraded by method. And we can do that by adding an operation to quality, which is deriving one quality from another. So if we make this a variable, and now take this code and make a separate function out of it. And this is going to be minus because it, we're subtracting a degradation. 
Now, we'd like this to stand alone rather than being part of this item. And in order to do that, it needs to reference an actual quality. What we're going to do is we're going to introduce a parameter for this. And we'll just check that all still works by running the tests. And if we're right now, we can pull this out of here. It has no dependencies on item, only on qualities. So run that. And now we can make this quality the receiver. And if we make that an operator, now this is failing, I think, because we've already got a minus in here. So let's just get rid of that one so that we can use this one. And now, unfortunately, we seem to be using our selves in here, so we'll just take this top value in there. All right, then. So we can now tidy up degraded by. And tidy up this as well. So we can inline this and inline this. And check that works. And now we can take this code and move it into quality. And that now is not an extension function, it's just a method. Run that. Good. And now I suspect we're going to keep on doing this quite a bit, this quality on a non-negative int. So let's give ourselves a companion object where we can write Vote function that takes an int as a value and returns a null of all quality so that people know that that might fail. And what should this look like? Well, we should try and create a non negative int on the value. If that succeeds, then we want to create a quality with a non negative int. And if it fails, then the null will do this. So that means that we can replace this constructor here and we can remove that reformat. So now we're calling our constructor function here with an int. And if that fails, then we know we tried to create a negative int because that's the only way that can happen. Let's run that. Good. Now let's return to item and find the uses degraded by. And we'll go through replacing them one by one to see what we get. First of all, simple update item. So let's inline that. And this is just a copy of our item with a quality replaced by the quality minus the number of days. Well, that looks reasonable, and we're using the minus operator that we've got in quality. So it will keep quality in range. Next one. Okay, now in our tests, we've got all these items that are calling degraded by. And if we inline these, then we are really just testing the operations on quality. Now, I think they may be worth keeping here for now, but I don't know. I think at some point we'll probably end up with better tests of quality, but let's leave these here for now and check that the tests still run. Good. And before we go on, we've got this odd minus minus. Well, minus minus is a plus. So what we really want to be able to say there is it's plus one. Now we don't have that operation, so let's go and add it. All right, the right hand side. We know this has to yield a quality. How should we implement it? Well, for now, we can just say this is return this minus minus right hand side. And check that runs. 
Good. Let's refresh our view of callers. Now we've got a number of them in item type. Let's inline this one, see what we get. That looks quite reasonable to me, so we'll leave it alone. Let's inline this one, see what we get. Uh, that again looks quite reasonable. Breathe. In like that. Now here again, we've got the minus minus, but we know we can replace that with our plus operator now. We'll just run those tests. Good. And finally, we've got the pass type. Let's in like that. Okay, we've definitely got this minus minus, so let's replace that with the plus. And we've also got this odd place where we say we actually want to set a zero quality, but in order to do that, we're copying the item now with a negative improvement. I think we could do better. I think we could say if days until sell by is less than zero, then we want to yield item copy. Well, we directly say the quality is quality of zero. Else, if we have an improvement and we want to use it. Let's put the braces in here. Now we have a problem that quality zero is calling our constructor function, which returns a quality question mark, a nullable quality. So to solve that problem with a really common case, we will invent quality zero. That doesn't exist, but if we ask IntelliJ, it would do it for us. And this is quality of zero and we know that can't fail so we can just double bang that check our test run good now we know that this can't happen here so we can take that out and i think this is now a little easier to understand we can see that we have this special case and then some other things happen run the tests good so now there should be no uses of degraded by we can go back here and remove this. And you can see that compared to the item of a few days ago, our tiny types have allowed us to reduce this basically to just data. Updated by is a little bit special. That is some business logic, but everything else is now living in our tiny types in a non-blank string and in our quality. We have, however, still got a little thing here where we are. Our constructor takes a non-negative int, so let's just go and fix that up. By hand, finding the places that that breaks the compile. If we knew there were lots of them, I think we'd have a more stylish refactor for that. But here we can see we just now can call the factory on quality. And the same is true in our test item factory. And there we go. Little review. Looking at quality now, it's a little bit strange defining plus in terms of minus rather than the other way around. So let's just reverse these, make that one plus, that one minus. This is the value plus minus the right hand side, and that is the value plus the right hand side. This we need to say, look inside our value to do it. And let's check that runs. Interestingly, this value could be private. We never actually operate on the value inside a quality except now through its operations. The only other thing we do do to a quality is to use its two string. And again, we don't need the value for that. So I think that's quite a nice little change because it will encourage us to add operations rather than look inside to see the value. Can we do the same thing for non-negative int? Well, this isn't marked as private, so let's just see what happens if we do do that. And the answer is here in quality, we are talking to the value inside our non-negative int. Now we could add operations to that. In particular here, maybe with plus we should, so we could take that out, add a member function for plus. 
Now this has to return an int because we could pass a negative int into it. So this will return an int. And this will be our value plus right hand side. Now we could add coerce at least to non-negative int, but I'm not sure that's worthwhile. I think there are lots of operations on int. So let us return that to a public value. Okay, let us commit that. So we've added this quality and a bunch of operations on it, including the fact that if you add or subtract from a quality, you get a quality that is capped in some sort of way. It can't go below zero and it can't go above 50, but it can stay above 50. So that logic is now all in our quality. Item then has become a lot simpler. We only use qualities when we talk about item. And that means we can operate in terms of the copy method directly rather than this degraded by. And then our tests, well, we discussed whether or not these should stay like this. I'm going to leave them for now. I think in a larger team, we'd probably end up with tests for non-negative int and for quality, and not because we'd be worried about people breaking them maybe, but in order to demonstrate the behavior and in particular, this behavior, this plus method. But I'll need that for now. And next time we're in the area, maybe we'll pick that up. So this is introduce quality, try and commit that. One warning, which we're going to assume is an import and is. And there we go. I think the answer to our question, would we gain value out of introducing another tiny type is yes, we have. I think at this stage, item is genuinely a data class. So I think that's our last tiny type for now. We'll keep an eye out though, for places where adding types to our code could make it simpler, reduce the opportunity for errors and make it more self-documenting. The owner of Gilded Rose is asking for a new feature. She now wants a checkout process. So if you'd like to help me work on that, then please subscribe to the channel. If you've enjoyed this, please click the like button. And if you have enjoyed this, then you'll enjoy the book that I wrote in that price called Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook. And in particular, chapter three covers data classes and their limitations when we should and shouldn't be using them. Thank you very much for watching.